A very good morning to all of the YouTube fans out there. Welcome to UConn 2.0, organized by the ISEC in University of Sri Jayawardenepura in collaboration with the ISEC in Chennai. First and foremost, to officially commence the conference, let us witness the welcoming message by the local committee president of ISEC in University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Ms. Kamesha Samarnayaka. Hey everyone, it gives me great pleasure to give the welcome speech for UConn 2.0 as the president of Isaac in University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Sri Lanka. UConn is an international conference about YouTubing and content creation, which will be happening on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th of July with more than 45 artists and YouTubers of the field, which will be live streamed in over 40 countries. The pandemic has been an opportunity for all of us to explore and discover our talents. And while all of us use YouTube as a media platform, only some of us know how exactly to use it efficiently and effectively as content creators. So this will be a platform to learn from professional YouTubers on, a, on how exactly to utilize YouTube. With this, I would also like to mention our collaborative partner, Isaac in Chennai, who has contributed immensely for the success of this event. And hereby, I welcome you to be with us in the days to come as we take you through the many wonderful aspects of YouTube and content creation. Welcome to UConn 2.0. Thank you, Ms. Kamesha. Prior to the start of the conference, let me give you a briefing on the agenda of UConn 2.0. UConn 2.0 is a four-day conference happening on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th of July, and we'll be bringing to you 11 sessions in which we will be focusing on a particular topic related to YouTubing and content creation. On the 2nd of July, today, we will be bringing to you the Beginner's Guide to YouTube at 11 a.m. and we'll be focusing on the legal aspect of YouTube at 4 p.m. We will end today's sessions with an entertaining musical session happening at 7 p.m. On, on the second day of the conference, we'll focus on the topics of YouTube for travel enthusiasts, Guide to be the perfect vlogger, and how to create high quality, reliable content on YouTube, which are timed at 11 a.m., 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Moving on to the third day, we will present you a discussion on how to avoid the common mistakes in YouTubing at 11 a.m. Also, we'll showcase a musical experience 3 p.m. onwards, whereas we'll end the day with a fun-filled entertaining session, which will start at 8 p.m. On the last day, we will enlighten you on the topics of how to make money through YouTube and how to promote your YouTube channel. In all these sessions, we'll be connecting you with the popular local and international YouTube icons and your favorite artists, inviting you to a truly enriching experience. So we request you to join with us on all the four days of the conference and get the best out of UConn 2.0. And now, Let's take a look at our event partners. Now it's time to start the very first session of our conference. 
Today, we have a special personality joining with us as the moderator of our inaugurating session of the conference. He is a famous and a talented news anchor, a TV personality and a digital media influencer, well known to all of us. Please welcome Mr. Sasan Kadayas, who will be joining with us for the commencement session. Over to you, Mr. Sasanka. Thank you very much, uh, Tejani. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac. Hi, everyone. Greetings from Sri Lanka, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Yukon 2.0, uh, International YouTubing and Content Creation Conference put together by ISEC in the University of Sri Jawadhanapura in collaboration with ISEC in Chennai. I reckon this is a wonderful platform to bring together YouTubers and the aspiring YouTubers to gain knowledge, share knowledge, and so on and so forth. So I believe today's session with the topic Beginner's Guide to YouTube will be of much benefit to all of you who are joining from anywhere in the world. So today's topic, our speakers uh, will be Pratima Adhikari, uh, Tuskin Fatima Basha, Bianca Gan, and Ekta Chaudhary. So the opening session, we will be featuring Pratima Adhikari, who will be talking about how to become a successful YouTuber in 2020. So Pratima Adhikari is a video presenter and a reviewer at Gadget by Nepal, which is a tech news portal of Nepal that gives users information tools and advice to get the most out of the technology. Hi, Pradima, great to have you here with us. How do you feel today? And what do you think of uh, Yukon, first of all? Hi, hello, am, am I audible? Yes, you are. Come okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, first of all, hello. I am really excited and happy to be a part of Nikon. It's um, a great initiative uh, by uh, students. And um, I think uh, these, these kind of conferences really uh, help connect people from all around the world, share information, share knowledge. And um, yeah, I think these things really, really help make the digital world grow faster. Awesome. So to begin with, uh, Pratima, I would like to ask you, how did you start on YouTube? How did you get into this industry? The audience would uh, love to uh, would love to hear that story. Um, uh, I started YouTubing uh, like almost three years ago, um, and it was something really prominent in Nepal at that time. There were people who were YouTubing, but it was not taken as seriously as it is today. So many content creators putting up such great content on YouTube, and uh, I basically went into YouTube because it, it's something really fascinating, and I thought uh, I could grow as a person. Um, I was uh, a really introvert kind of person uh, before I um, joined YouTube, and I really wanted to uh, develop my speaking skills and share the knowledge I have about tech, and um, that is basically why I got into YouTube. So uh, Pratima's a vehicle needs fuel to run on the road. Likewise, a business or an individual needs content to create value. How important is creating value on YouTube? It is. I think on today's date, it is really important. Um, content, not just content, I think relevant content is really, really necessary because uh, people are looking up everything. You know, previously, in my personal experience, whatever I wanted to find out or gain knowledge about, I used to go on uh, Google and search for it. Now people actually search it on YouTube. So it's really important that you have relevant content put up so that people get what they want. And it's really important because uh, uh, you know you need to uh, solve problems. We're not just making content, but we're solving problems. So that is why it, there is a need to create value. On, especially on YouTube. 
So Pratima, uh, please tell us, uh, so your YouTube channel is quite popular in your country. What are the tips that you can share with us? Uh, the audience would love to hear, the aspiring YouTubers who are joining uh, on this platform would love to hear that story as well. Please share a few tips that uh, you, can, you can express. Okay, so um, uh, in my experience, I've, uh, what I've always, uh, you know, uh, thought is uh, that uh, that there is no set of particular rules that you can follow to become a YouTuber. Uh, it's just number one, you need to, you know, uh, set a goal. Now, the first step is setting a goal. You need to set a path. There is uh, something that everybody wants to talk about, and that is why they want to start a YouTube channel in the first place. So uh, you need to select a path. A path is like a purpose that you want to uh, that you want to follow or that you want to that you want to go to know about. You know, some people would love to talk about poetry, some people would uh, love uh, to uh, travel and travel blogs and let people know where they're traveling. Some people, you know, want, want to show off their makeup skills or their sending abilities. And so some people would like to do one of the videos like me. You know, there, there must be something that people really want to do. So uh, selecting a path is the foremost um, thing that you need to do before starting a YouTube channel because, uh, you know, there is a specific line that you want to follow. So um, now after, you know, starting a channel, um, as I said earlier, you need to uh, be in it. Because what are you going to say to your uh, subscribers or to the viewers? That is what you need to put up. And the content needs to be relevant. And um, for us tech people, it's actually uh, a little bit easy because uh, there is something or the other always happening in the tech world. There's something new coming for the updates and so many things. So, um, so, you know, tech is really something that creates curiosity. So we have something or, or the other to talk about. And, uh, and even in other people's uh, YouTube channels, you there is, uh, there must be something new that's happening, and people really search for new kind of content, new and relevant kind of content. So that is what you need to also understand. And uh, you know, and sometimes there comes a point where you think that there is nothing more to talk about, and that that kind of makes you stuck in one place. So. Uh, what you can do is actually take inspiration from what other people are doing. When brainstorming doesn't work, you can take inspiration from other people. You know, uh, maybe they are staying well in the market. So, uh, yeah, and then you can mix it up with your imagination. And, uh, it's not always, um, you know, most people things to just uh, get imagination, but but it, it, it really does help when you're out of ideas or something like that. And uh, the other thing I think uh, you need to do is be regular on your content. Uh, because, you know, as, as a school child, uh, there was a show called Vampire Diaries that aired on television every day, uh, every day. And I used to wait for that content. It, it aired, I think, uh, 4.30. And I used to wait for it. So you need to be regular. You need to tell people that, yes, this time of the day, I am going to put up a content. So people will be waiting for you. Uh, so, so uh, just select a day or a time that you want to put up a content. And tell people that you're going to put up a content. That is what is, you know, going to make people like, make people like you about. Okay. Now, it might seem that I'm following a sequence of some kind, but it, I'm not following a sequence. This is just what everybody should be in moderation. And uh, first, the most important thing uh, about YouTube is giving love, love to your subscribers. And you know, by love, I just don't mean that uh, you need to give that heart in the comment, but you know, you need to interact with your uh, with your viewers. You know, tell them, uh, ask questions, tell them what you what you're feeling, tell them if if you don't have content, then ask them content. You know, uh, our subscribers are the um, are a very important source of our content as well. So you need to be very interactive with them. And as interactive as you are, on today's date, I think people will really like you. And um, of course, being polite, uh, being um, friendly to your uh, subscribers helps a lot. And uh, if you share your experience with your subscribers, they really, really uh, like you in that sense. And that is what has happened in our channel. We try to interact with people um, on a daily basis so that they, uh, they like us, they like our content, and they like uh, what we do. So, uh, yeah.
So yeah, that's basically, I think, what you need to do after putting up a content, you need to just be there and be there in a dedicated way. All right, that's a, that's a wonderful explanation, uh, Pratima. Okay. And uh, what do you think about consistency? You mentioned uh, initially about relevance. Consistency is also important when you're on social media, for that matter. Exactly. Any social media platform. What are your views on, on this uh, factor? Being consistent, of, it is important because it, it's just like uh, being consistent with your meals to be happy and healthy. Uh, on YouTube, it is the same thing. If you are consistent, your viewers will get what they have expected and, and they will get the knowledge that they are expecting from you. And uh, your viewers will... Um, I'm sorry. So your viewers will uh, uh, appreciate the hard work that you do in putting up content on regular intervals because that really shows that you are working hard to make something for them. Uh, you're working hard to share knowledge. So consistency is is one of the keys i think they are one of i think it is one of the most important factors that everyone should uh, every youtuber should follow and that is what we try to do as well i'm sorry you're not audible i'm sorry yeah so i just wanted to say to the audience you can send your questions on the comment section please send your questions and we will direct them to to our wonderful speakers. So uh, moving on to the conversation, Pratima, you engage in the creation of content on a subject which changes every second. How challenging is this? Talking about technology is, is not easy. Of course, I would say that it's, it's not easy, but um, it, but it's really interesting and you get to learn about a lot of things on a daily basis and that is what keeps us going. Uh, you know, some iteration of, phone, of, of a phone that launched today is launching a year later and you have speculations about it and so many things uh, that that is new and that is innovative and that is really, uh, really, really interesting and fun. Actually, I don't take it as a challenge. I take it as uh, something that is going to give me knowledge and that is going to change my outlook towards a certain company or, or a certain brand. You know, in today's date, there is um, nothing as sure, nothing, uh, so nothing called as uh, one big player in the tech industry. I think anyone who brings up a new and innovative thing is, is going to be there on top. And uh, finding out what everybody is doing, every brand is uh, bringing out something new, uh, whether it be from competition or whether it be, uh, you know, just plain uh, innovation, you know, it, it's really fun and interesting. And that is how I take it. I, I don't take it as a challenge. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that's a wonderful answer and uh, an inspiration to uh, all of us. So, what do you think of uh, YouTube in the next five years or in, in the next uh, 10 years? How would YouTube be beneficial to uh, the audience or anyone who's aspiring to come on YouTube? I think uh, video platforms like YouTube are growing so immensely. And uh, like I said in the beginning, um, I never thought of YouTube as the, as a place where I could, you know, I could make a profession out of it. But now that I've been in here for three years, it, it's a huge platform. It's a platform where you can grow. It's a platform where you can earn as well. And uh, YouTube itself has grown so immensely over the years and they're introducing so many good things for the creators and, and aspiring YouTubers. So, um, YouTube, I think, is going to be a huge platform, more bigger than it is right now, because um, uh, because what happens in tech is uh, everything keeps on improving, nothing degrades. So YouTube being a part of tech, I think it's going to keep improving and bringing out new uh, ways for people to get engaged in it, for creators to make content, and uh, for aspiring uh, YouTubers to join this platform as well. It is a huge platform. We have been a part of it, um, and I think it's just going to keep growing better and better. And there's so many possibilities that might come up uh, in YouTube. So yes, I think it's going to grow immensely in the next five years very well. And that's great news. 
So, Pratima, uh, we have a few minutes uh, to spend with you. So okay. let's make uh, maximum use of it. Sure. Uh, that's what I believe. And then it's, it's obviously valuable to our audience. So, YouTube as a platform has enabled uh, plenty of people to create value in various genres. So what do you think of uh, content creation uh, on any platform? Uh, keeping aside YouTube, but idea generation, uh, executing these ideas and coming up with ideas. What are, are there any YouTube channels that you have followed or you have benchmarked on when creating your content? I have, um, I have actually, I, um, as I mentioned earlier, when you run out of ideas, there is always one thing called the inspiration that you can take from other people. And, uh, you know, like in every, like in every industry, there is a benchmark. And I think there is a benchmark in YouTube as well. Uh, there are creators that um, who make so, such good content that you, you would want to be like them. So uh, yes, there are so many content creators that I follow. Uh, I, I actually follow a lot of tech YouTubers, um, tech YouTubers uh, from the US, like NKVHD, uh, Jonathan Morrison, they make tech videos, tech YouTubers from India, tech YouTubers from Bangladesh, everywhere. I think I, uh, um, I also follow a lot of tech YouTubers from Thailand and, and uh, Singapore. You know, I mean, there is content everywhere and you can, you can gain something out of, out of um, you know, content from, from any source. So yes, I take inspiration from a lot of tech YouTubers, um, especially when it's about something that I don't know. Initially, I uh, learned a lot of the, the tech things that I did not know from YouTube videos itself. So any aspiring uh, creator who uh, wishes to make good content can take inspiration. You know, there's nothing wrong in uh, gaining knowledge from others. You know, that is the only way you can get, get better at what you do. Because if you really want to do something, you need to know how to go about it. And the creators that are there on YouTube, are, they're exactly uh, the source of inspiration that you need. So uh, following tech YouTubers, um, uh, especially in the term, especially in making videos, you know, shooting videos, I take inspiration from a lot of uh, um, tech YouTubers because, you know, they, they do it really properly. And you you just wonder how, how do they do it, like, do it like that? So you research it on the internet, you watch their content, and then you try, then you try to improve what you do. And uh, that is how we've been able to put up, you know, good content on our YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, content creation is is something that uh, that comes out of uh, you as well. That comes out of your uh, uh, dreams as well. But it is also something that uh, comes from uh, from taking inspiration from others. Uh, so yeah, content creation, you can go by taking inspiration and um, and following what other people do because. The people who are famous are famous for a reason. And you can always, always follow their footsteps and mix it up with your own ways uh, to create better content. Now, one final question. Uh, quick question. I need a quick answer, uh, Pratima. So you're a product reviewer. This question is from the audience, all right? You're a product reviewer. Could you share us, uh, some tips? when you are doing a product review? How can a product uh, be reviewed? Yeah, sure, of course. Um, product reviews. Uh, first of all, you need to have a product, okay? Uh, so what we do, I can share my experience, okay? We have a product and uh, then we unbox it, we see what's there. Uh, sometimes it, it so happens that uh, we already know what's in there because we've seen a lot of reviews already. But uh, just it, it's real so exciting when you when you can when you see a new product and there is uh, there are so many things to know about it. We unbox it and then we uh, test it. We test it for like two weeks. We don't make the review uh, review. We don't make the review time really short because it's really important to use the product before giving your judgment for a very good amount of time. Uh, you know. You know, when you use it for just a short time, it it really becomes it. You you cannot really judge. Uh, how it is. 
So we take a lot of time in judging the product. We review it for at least two weeks, very vigorously put, put it through so many tests. And then we, and then when we have the final conclusion, uh, we write it down, we put it up in points, make a script or something. And then we give the product to someone else in our team and they test it as well. So we cross check if my findings match with his findings, what are, what are, what are the mistakes that I might've done that he or she can point it out. So we, uh, Cross check, and then uh, that was, and then we finalize the script at the end after all the testing. And uh, after finalizing, we proofread the script, the script again, and uh, collectively, that is, we sit together and we proofread the script. And uh, then we go about shooting videos. So shooting videos, because we already have an outline of what findings we've had. We uh, take footages, small footages, different footages of uh, what we have found out of the product itself. And then uh, we make a video, like just, just like this. Uh, we put up a camera and then talk. And then it goes for the editing process. And after the editing is done, it's checked twice, twice or twice, and then it's put up on YouTube. It's a really rigorous process, actually, reviewing a product, especially smartphones and laptops. They need a lot of testing. All right, Pratima, uh, thank you very much uh, for those tips. And I, I believe those tips uh, would be of much benefit to our audience. So we say thank you very much to uh, Pratima Adhikari. Pratima, once again, thank you very much for accepting the invitation and joining in this. Uh, thank you so much platform. for having me. So we wish you success and we wish that your channel grows from strength to strength. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Stay Thank safe. You so much. Take care. And take care. You too. Thank you so much. All right. So we say goodbye to Pratima Adhikari from Get It By Nepal. And next we move on to our next topic, which is we talk about five steps of video creation. So let me introduce the speaker to you, Fatima Taskin Basha. Fatima is a popular YouTube creator of India's famous YouTube channel called The Urban Fight. She's also a robotic system architect at Infosys. She's also the CEO of Skillo and an SCE certified fitness trainer. And through her YouTube channel, she offers tips for a healthier, organized lifestyle. Hi, Fatima. It's great to have you. Wonderful uh, to have a chat with you on this platform. I think uh, you are uh, a unit of diversity. Hi, if Shisha. I'm not mistaken. So, yes. Thank you so much for, for inviting me over here. And uh, thank you, Isaac and Tishani and everybody on the team who's been uh, working relentlessly on this. It's great to see that on an on a early morning. Uh, 420 people watching this. So thank you so much for the invite. And yes, um, sorry about cutting you off. Please, uh, you ask me. No something. problem. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation and joining in this platform. So let's begin with your story on YouTube. How, how did you start on YouTube? What's the inspiration? Is this going to be like a, a Q&A format, Sashanka, or do you want me to share the screen and do like a presentation uh, sort of a thing? Uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we have questions from audience as well. So we'll move into the questions from the audience right after the initial question, right? Okay. So because I have let's share your story. PPT. Sorry? I have a PPT ready. Uh, uh, oh, all right. Yes. Yeah, so if you, if, you, if you would let me share my screen, we'll, we'll go ahead with that if that's okay. Uh, yes, you could. Yes, you could. Okay. You could share, share your screen and uh, go ahead. Please do. All right. Cool. Wonderful. All right, can you see my screen? Yes, we can, yes. All right, great. All right, so he hello everyone. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the invite. Uh, I hope you're doing good. Um, now, um, and thank you so much for joining, for joining the session. Now, I'm sure that all of you like watching uh, uh, videos. I'm pretty sure you like watching videos on YouTube. You like watching uh, videos on uh, Facebook. So who exactly, I want you to take a moment and think about who exactly is your favorite creator. 
like if you want like comment on the on the facebook page as well who do you think is your favorite creator uh, is it like uh, the the stalwarts that started this whole thing which is superman and nas daily and kc or or who, who else it is so i'll tell you what's mine while you while you type out your answer uh, my 3 years back my favorite creator was uh, superman lily singh and i think she kc and nas daily are the reason why more than half of the youth uh, <laughs> of the of our country and even in sri lanka are roaming around the streets with a gorilla pod and uh, uh, and and a camera uh, me being one of them because they painted this whole story of fame glamour glitz and money and all you had to do was just upload a video every week but after uploading two to three videos and not getting more than a few views and a and a comment from your mummy papa we are proud of you beta uh the dream gets shattered because uh, uh you realize that behind that uh, uh fame glamour and money is a ton of hard work uh insecurity fighting trolls ignoring hate comments uh and still not giving up i have been doing it for the past 3 years and i strictly advise that uh that you focus on your studies finish your graduation uh so that you have a main stream of profession and never have to uh, fall back on clickbaity videos as your main source of income Uh, only if you promise me that will I teach you how to make video. So is that a yes? Just let me know. All right. So I I hope I hope that you all that you always have a main main source of mainstream of profession that you that you uh, that you hold on to. Be journalism, engineering, doctor. No matter how much you you do not like your desk job, it's good to have the first one. So uh, as long as we have that clear, let me begin by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Taskeen. I was a software developer for eight years, a hit trainer for exactly four months, and a YouTube creator for the past three years. Uh, the name of my channel is The Urban Fight, uh, which has led to the birth of a startup called Skillo. Over five hundred startups had applied for uh, uh, Telangana startup incubation program called Lab Thirty Two, and we were among the top forty-five that got selected. My partner in crime is my husband Sugal. Uh, he has worked as a software developer for in Amazon, Microsoft, and currently works for ServiceNow. In terms of metrics in the online world, we have achieved 1.6 million subscribers uh, on YouTube, 3.6 lakh followers on Facebook, 74,000 followers on Instagram. We make videos related to career, finance, and communication, and we also occasionally talk about social topics that have affected us the most, uh, like stammering, eve teasing. Uh, we even interviewed a gynecologist and the police commissioner of Hyderabad to get answers for some of the most pressing questions that baffle us all. and recently we also got covered in uh, newspapers like the hindu namaste telangana new india express uh, and wow magazine now the reason why i am doing so much of self dabba is to establish my credibility is to, and to tell you that uh, we know what we are doing and today i am here not just to uh, teach you something but also learn from you uh, especially from you con to point uh now having said that in spite of everything that i've said earlier about not jumping out of the youtubing bandwagon i believe that youtube videos are in general a great way to uh, uh, bring about a social change uh, to educate people and what i love about today uh, what isaac sri lanka and i think in combination with isaac chennai are doing is that all of us are here because instead of just mindlessly scrolling through instagram as consumers we want to be creators and make a difference so uh, I, so it's okay if you don't know anything about video making uh because i promise that today at the end of this session you will know where to start uh so uh here here's uh before before we begin this is something that i want you to think about now suppose that you assuming that you want to make videos theek hai you have decided that you're going to make videos on youtube or instagram or on facebook now welcome to the world of internet what do you think is the first problem you're going to face uh so just just comment and tell me what is it is it related to scripting is it related to editing is it related to uh facing the camera what 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 do you think the the moment you decide that you're going to make a first video what is that one thing the one problem that's stopping you from making it just think over it okay so i think i think sugan is checking the the comment section on facebook i think there will be a lag so um so it's like this now the first problem i'll tell you the first problem is of course learning how to face the camera and figuring out your shooting style editing style scripting style and also learning how to handle all the haters uh, who are just waiting to rip apart your work 
but the number one problem of every creator is not being hated it's being ignored over 300 hours of content is uploaded on youtube every minute and in this vast ocean of internet where your content will go nobody will find out so yes you have to fight for that space in on the youtube section on the recommended section of youtube we at the urban fight started uh, uh, at the time when in india uh, a mobile network called jio had launched and with that there was so much of entertainment being uh, posted and watched in such great numbers that it was impossible uh, uh, to be picked up for us to be picked up by the youtube algorithm uh, but we still made it to a million only by creating good content and today i'm going to tell you how all right so today i've broken down the steps of uh, uh, video creation into five simple steps uh, step number 1 is to discover yourself uh, now the only way to make great content is to truly know who you really are uh, there's a director in india his name is anubhav sinha and he used to make some pretty weird movies earlier uh, like tum bin i'm i'm not sure if you are a fan of bollywood uh, sasanka or any or any of the isaac sri lanka team watch it but he used to make movies like tum bin and cash early which is not like really up to the standard and somebody asked anubhav sinha you know how come you're make, making such great movies now uh, what's your smoking bro <laughs> and uh, apparently anurag kashyap was also there uh who was another director and he said uh, you should ask him what he was smoking before because the kind of movies he's making now is a person who he, that he has always been it's just that he's realized that now and now look what happened anubhav sinha is making crazy amazing movies like mulk uh article 50 and thappar so these are these are really amazing movies which are with a particular social social message as well, as well as as well as entertaining uh the point is no matter if you are in your 20s 30s 40s or 50s it's important that you discover who you really are uh and that happens only if uh you work on yourself and for that you need to do these three things number one uh stay updated so know about uh what is happening around you uh be it through news through social media through trends uh, i wouldn't recommend twitter because uh you know it's sort of like a war zone right now but otherwise stay updated with what with whatever is happening around you some people like to you know believe that things are not hap- whatever ha- is happening in the world right now should not happen and they close themselves off completely but that's uh, but unless and until you figure out we you you stay updated with with the trends around you it's impossible for you to connect with a particular trend and and do more work in that direction um number 2 is meet more people network so when you meet more people uh, you share experiences you start a dialogue i'm not saying that uh, during the pandemic go out and meet more people but um, but when i was a part of i joined this club called just like isaac there's another club called toastmasters and i've been a member of it for 3 to 4 years and uh, what we are we we basically were a group of people who admitted that we are not very good at public speaking so we would get together and give each other chance to speak on the stage so that gave uh, that gave me an a chance to meet multiple people share ideas uh, start a dialogue and that was really important now to give you another example um, is that uh, when i was in college uh, uh, on on the, there we had something called an entrepreneurship cell e cell and i never really thought that i would be a person who will who will uh, who will be an entrepreneur so i never stepped inside one of their meetings but and now uh, i i have my own startup uh, so the the thing is uh, never uh, never restrict yourself to the possibility of of something not happening uh, not happening uh, in in the later future so that is the reason why even if you think that you are an introvert and cannot be an entrepreneur uh, feel free to go out and meet people or attend events uh, that that do some that um uh, that talk about entrepreneurship or or give you experience or give you ideas of what it's about and the third thing is get some sort of work experience now i perhaps for a for a for a few months not happy with the project that i was in when i was a software engineer but uh, having said that i always encourage people to uh, pick up a full time job because a job teaches you uh, discipline it teaches you teamwork uh, and interpersonal skills things that are not taught in our schools and colleges um uh, in fact i i say take a step further ahead and also take a job in in the service industry 
uh, because uh, when I was a fitness trainer, I realized that people in the service industry, like the like your waiters, your customer service representatives, your um, uh, your uh, uh, fitness trainers, we are asked to smile uh, and be nice uh, even when you're rude to us, and uh, that that sort of builds that you know that experience uh, makes you more empathetic and uh, and frankly less of an asshole. So, and empathy is the number one uh, quality you need to uh, build a YouTube channel or uh, to even uh, build a product or uh, work on a company. So that was, those were the, according to me, those are the three steps you need to do to first discover your, discover yourself even before you, uh, I mean, while you start a YouTube channel. Uh, because when you do these things, you discover your strengths, you discover your weaknesses, your likes, your dislikes, and you grow as a person. Unfortunately, today, all the young crowd uh, wants to just make videos on YouTube uh, without doing any of this uh, offline hard work. Uh, in my time, there was a craze that uh, I want to become a roadie. There was this thing called MTV Roadies in India. Uh, but today, the craze is I want to be a YouTuber. Uh, because they think that making videos is a shortcut to success, uh, to money and fame. But if you really think about it, uh, Casey Neistat, I love this guy. He was a famous blogger. He's a famous blogger because he was a very hardworking filmmaker before he joined YouTube. Uh, all the stand-up comedians spend hundreds and hours of hundreds of hours of stage time offline before making that one video that goes viral on YouTube. Um, even the the middle the middle photo that I have, Kurt Gazad in a nutshell. Uh, that's the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, they released a video saying that they spend more than one thousand two hundred hours on a single video. It's a mind-blowing piece of artwork. I would recommend that you go and check out uh, their channel. Even if you take uh, some of the Indian YouTubers example, uh, I think one of the one of the mainstream guys that I admire is Bhuvan Bam. Uh, he has evolved on YouTube. He doesn't just make angry Master G videos anymore. He talks about you know uh, women's safety. Uh, he makes music videos, and he even attended the Geneva Convention, where he interviewed Shekhar Gupta, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, he's the editor on chief, uh, editor in chief of the print. Uh, so Bhuvan, and the best part is while during the pandemic, the entire YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, influencers were fighting over making videos on YouTube versus Instagram. This guy went on the ground and found, and interviewed the people who are the lifelines of the society and try to find out, uh, try to generate uh, funds to help such people, be it, uh, be it farmers, your milk, milk guy or your uh, or people from the transgender community. So that is so he experiments. He might fall, but he grows. And I think this he's like he's just one of those uh, mainstream people whom I'm proud that is growing on on the YouTube platform. So it makes sense, right? Uh, unless you work on yourself, you will have nothing substantial to share with your audience. So spend considerable time in growing and discovering who you are, uh, because as they say, to produce good content, you first need to consume good content. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the worst part about YouTube algorithm is that uh, once you watch a, a shitty video, it, YouTube algorithm starts thinking that you are a shitty person and start recommending you the rest of the shit, uh, shitty videos that, uh, that are there on the platform. Uh, that's how the algorithm is because if, if, if you like, if you just watch like expectation versus reality videos, it expects that that's the kind of videos you'll watch and that's your IQ level. And that's the kind of video it starts recommending you. But once you make your effort to find the right kind of content to watch, like a Kurt Gazar in a nutshell, my favorite creators are Geography Now, Vsauce 2, Vsauce 3, Trevor Noah, John Oliver. Uh, even though we don't create content like them, I follow them because it makes us learn something. So make an effort to follow at least two or three good creators because once you follow them, YouTube algorithm starts realizing that, you know what, this person is, is wants some intelligent content along with entertainment. And that is when the YouTube algorithm will start recommending you more of such content. So, uh, so of course, watching good co content is also a way of discovering who you really are. So that was step number one. Step number two is respecting your audience. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, there's so much of content being uploaded online that if you don't respect your audience, even for a second, they will move on to the next suggested video. Now, uh, the four ways in which I respect my audience is this. Number one, I write down my script. Uh, if I say uh, mm, so, or repeat the same point at three different places, uh, then I'm not respecting my audience's time, which is why I recommend that you always 
uh, write your script before you get in front of camera. Now, like we at the Urban Fight, uh, create uh, videos for interview preparation. Like how, if you want to prepare for interviews and answer, tell me about yourself, how, uh, how to answer, where do you see yourself five years from now, strengths and weaknesses. Plus, we also make finance videos. What is mutual funds? What is stock market? And these are extremely complicated uh, uh, topics. And it takes, number one, we need to do our research so that we provide credible information. And number two, we need to, uh, to really organize it in a way so that even a fifth grader can understand what is a stock market video. And that's the kind of feedback we get on our channel. Uh, moms and dads comment and tell me, my daughter came to me and said, uh, dad, did you invest in this mutual fund? And I'm like, how do you know about this? And uh, they said, because I saw the Urban Fights video on, on mutual fund. So that is, that, is, that is what respecting your audience is all about. You have to make sure that, you, that the content you provide, you have to think about your audience. You don't have to, I, if I go in front of a camera and think I'm, and say that I'm going to show off how amazing of a YouTuber I am, uh, then nobody gives a damn. But if my focus is how do I present information, I think about the audience and present information that is easy for them to understand, no matter how simplified I have to do, how much effort I have to put in the script. That is what uh, really attracts audience. So number one, always write down your script. So for some people wing it, if it works for them, great. But I, I would recommend that, if, especially if there's an educational channel, always write it down. Number one, number two is uh, do your research. Suppose I want to make a video on a personal topic. Uh, like for example, uh, like the, the like the thing that I just said, uh, my Eve teasing story. Tell me this: if I make a video, or if I want to make a video on my Eve teasing story, uh, do you still think I need to do my research? Just type yes or a no. All right. If you if you think, what do you think? If it's if it's yes or a no. Uh, so I'll tell you what I think. Yes, I need to do my research uh, and go to the credible sites to find out how many people get affected by it. What celebrities are saying what my friends have gone through uh, and uh, uh, because what my friend and what the experts are saying because uh, when i try to understand different points of view even if i don't agree with them it adds a layer of credibility to my message so if research is important for such a personal message topic imagine the kind of research that it take for an educational video and the third way to respect your audience is to don't be a sellout uh, don't sell products that you personally don't believe in. Uh, the 10,000, 1 lakh rupees, 12 lakh rupees, or 2 lakh rupees that a brand gives you is nothing to do when compared to the trust your audience has in you uh, by, by watching your video. So instead of a short-term monetary gain, okay, you know what, let me just give a shout out to the supplement brand that I don't even use. It's okay, I'll, I'll earn 1 lakh. Think about the long-term uh, audience connect. I'm not saying don't make money. Of course, do make money. But uh, but because I don't promote every Tom and Dick and Harry product that comes to comes to us, I can charge a premium amount to the five to seven uh, brands that I believe in and I use and have long term contracts. With. So, uh, so obviously, as you can see, all these three things take a lot of work, but think of it as a long term investment. Uh, and uh, all the, uh, I'm pretty sure every everybody who invests in mutual funds or stock market can relate. Is this is a long term investment. And these three things will not get you results instantly, but uh, long term, catching you'll make a lot of money. Now, uh, step number three is to make it shareable. Now, uh, I want you to take a moment and uh, given that you're watching this on Facebook Live, go back to your Facebook uh, profile and see what was the last thing you shared. Just check, just check what, what was the last thing you shared on your Facebook uh, feed or your WhatsApp? Was it like a meme or was it like a news article or what? Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to show you my personal Facebook page. Okay, so I'll tell you what I shared. And uh, I shared this. Uh, uh, she's PV Sindhu. And uh, she's, uh, uh, I shared this because, uh, because it made me feel proud of Sindhu. Uh, and uh, the, the fact that she's from the same state as me, Telangana, uh, uh, even Hyderabad, uh, that also connects with me. Uh, then I shared this video about a foreigner coming to India and Pakistan and concluding that our streets and food and smell are the same. But if you think about it, politicians on both sides of the country, India and Pakistan, uh, they uh, create uh, issues because they want to hide the fact that economy is going down, there are no answers, there are no jobs, pandemic is going around. So uh, when I see this video, I actually, the emotion that I had was anger. It made me angry. 
because of course we are the same and but unfortunately uh, differences are being created to hide uh, bigger facts next is this video uh, by prashasti singh this video made me both uh, cry and laugh at the same time it's about uh, how when her father passed away how her mother wore a superwoman cape cape uh, what i mean by that is uh, apparently her father used to you used to be the first, the decision maker and her mother used to take a back seat and when the pa father passed away prashasti decided that she's going to help her mother but then her mother really stepped up uh, wore the cape and said you go live your life and you don't have to change your life for me and that's a beautiful set uh, uh, so this 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 video made me both both happy and sad at the same time so if you think about it we share content that makes us feel something uh, proud angry sad or happy uh, i share all the avenger trailer movie trailers because it makes me feel powerful uh, so if you want uh, your video to spread you need to make it shareable and uh, for that you need to make it feel something now there's no formula i can give you to push your emotional buttons but one of the ways is to obviously uh, use stories uh, graphs and numbers are great but uh, the story of a man uh, cooking for an orphanage that is shareable uh, the story of a 106 year old mastanamma uh, who was making food village style that is shareable uh she unfortunately passed away but her, if you if you if you have time please go and check out her videos them some really amazing work and uh, even the stand up comedy videos that connect with us are the ones that have a story like look at this 11 million view this guy from hyderabad dark skin and getting married i think that's 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 thing that all of us indians most of us indians can connect with so that uh, so if you see that Uh, they, these are things that that connect with us and warm our heart in a way, and that is what makes them shareable. Of course, there's no uh, one size fits all, so you need to experiment and find out uh, what inside you you can use to establish an emotional connect with your audience, because that is when your videos will get shared. All right. Step number four is to decide your format. Uh, then after you decide, I mean, while you're figuring out the rest of the process, the next thing you need to do is to design is to decide how will you present the message. of course you don't we don't have the money to make a super amazing ama um, animation video like kurt gazard uh, so start with the format i hope i'm pronouncing that right uh, so start with the format that works best for you uh, here are a few examples number one vlogs number two is a uh, group discussions just get two people in a room with different perspectives and ask them to talk uh, given the fact that now that our entire world is split on every topic be it politics or even on the fact that wear even on wearing mask which i cannot believe how uh, given that everybody people have different uh, ideas if you just get them in a room and make them talk it gives you like data and content that's really useful then you can share stories of people then you can use the animation style you can also use humor uh, or stand up skits something that really works in india and that's what the trending page is really full of or the simple thing is uh, do a monologue sit in front of a camera like this normally and talk of course there are a lot more formats so keep watching the videos and experiment what format works for you so when we started uh, we did everything we did dance videos we did comedy videos uh, i even started exaggerating like superwoman because you know uh, she was a great influence to me a uh, few years back uh, me and sugan uh, that's my husband we would also wake up at 6 uh, so we had our normal uh, software engineering day jobs on week weekdays on weekends we would wake up at 6 am go to parks and road shows uh, across all along hyderabad uh, do a uh, 15 minute workout sessions and at the end of every session we'd say you know this is a youtube channel please subscribe by the way all of this embarrassment is available uh, uh, on public by it's uh, it's public by the way you can go and check it out uh, but having said that i i never regret doing any of these because if, only after doing all of these formats have i realized that my style is to just sit in front of the camera like i'm doing right now and talk so you figure out what format works for you and finally step number 5 is let's get technical uh now i know that uh, i'm pretty sure you guys uh, you want to point to have different uh, panels and talks on uh, technicalities but i have to talk about three technical details that uh, are absolutely important to give a direction to your youtube journey uh, or even if uh, uh, if you're building a product number one is branding so think about this when you the like this plethora of content happening on youtube uh, right now and when you browse through youtube 
you just uh, suppose you're randomly browsing you just and you have a favorite creator let's assume it's mostly same you just you just find out that this is a mostly same video or a nas daily video or a kc kc nice type video how do you do that how do you know that branding right a uh, branding is the first step to let your audience know to audience identify and know who you are or what you do for that make sure that you have a channel description uh, about page uh, because uh, the about page that we have on youtube and on instagram clearly states what we are what what is it that we do and what kind of work you will find here uh, second is channel art so don't just uh, channel art is the is a cover photo you put everywhere uh, based on facebook youtube or instagram so uh, when you for you for the channel art don't just randomly use images online uh, capture some of your work uh, if you are like a cooking channel take photos of wh- what you have made or give your team some limelight and uh, let these things represent the work that you do even thumbnails act as branding uh, we see that all the major youtubers use their face on their thumbnail for the audiences to recognize uh, that it's their video we also do that if you notice go and go and search for the urban fight you'll fi- find my face in in almost all of all of the videos that we have uh, there's also a channel called bong eats uh, and what they do is that they have this fish tail if you notice on the top left side they have this fish tail that tells you that among whenever i'm searching for a particular recipe uh, and i search this plethora of videos and i see uh, this fish tail i know that this is a video that i want to watch this is a because i'm a fan of bongi so this is the this is the video that i want to watch and so basically uh, branding makes your audience identify you and if they come across your video you don't want them to think as ah, this is just another random uh, viral video so they want you want them to go through the rest of your videos and in the second they should find out what you do and see your previous work and eventually subscribe second is youtube analytics uh youtube has analytics uh facebook has analytics instagram has analytics they are like a control panel because they give an insight of what's actually happening in your channel see uh youtube through through your channel description and channel art your audience gets to know who you are but through analytics you get to know who your audience is uh, what is their age group what with what country they uh, they're coming from whether they're subscribed or not subscribed where they are they're watching it on a mobile phone or they're watching it on a desktop because when you do that whether it's men or women because when when you do that you figure out uh it helps you create content to cater to that particular audience better uh third is engaging with your audience now if all the google uh, conducted youtube events be it in hyderabad or delhi have taught me anything it's that you need to engage with your audience uh reply with your reply with the comments or simply give a heart uh, to the ones that you like because uh, you recognize your followers by mentioning their comments in the in in um, in the next video simply ask them a question i see slimers do this a lot uh, they always post a question and ask when was the last time you you know visited mcdonalds and then people start commenting and uh, believe me that having said that uh, uh, even though uh, youtube says that you, keep, you even youtube facebook or instagram says that you need to constantly engage with the audience i believe that that's not true because why keep why waste somebody else's time just because you want just because you want your page rank to improve uh, i so uh, on a, on moral grounds i personally believe that you should not post unless you have something important to share with your audience uh, that's my that might be completely opposite for an entertainment youtuber but as an educational youtuber i think it's my responsibility to not waste uh, somebody else's time just because i want them to engage with with uh, with me more having said that the kind of engagement that we plan is something that's useful like for example the interview course that we are releasing on our uh, on our website the engagement that we have planned is that after an interview uh, uh, experience they come back and comment how their experience was and that is when you know the other people also come and see all right so this is what the experience was that what happens beneath our on our youtube channel beneath our tell me about yourself video or our strengths and weaknesses video people come and share the interview experience and they engage with each other and they tell okay mera aisa gaya this is what happened to me this is what happened to you this was the question happened to me that is useful entertainment the useful engagement so i would suggest that uh, on a moral level think also think about your audience's time of course platforms want their audience to be on the platform for as long as you can but i think as a creator it's our responsibility to not waste the audience's time and only uh, only talk when you have really really something important to uh, share so that's about it uh, before i conclude this session uh, uh, i'd like to say that uh, uh, i'm hoping that you learned something new today and it's great to make uh, Uh, to make our lives all about clicks and engagement and analytics but it's even more important to be offline so uh today's bonus tip <laughs> uh, which is something that i share in all of my videos is that uh spend time offline as much as you can 
because that is when you talk to people uh, you connect you start a dialogue you empathize you understand and uh, uh, only then can you create something beautiful and i strongly believe that online uh, hate spreads faster than love but offline the reverse happens i think offline love spreads much much faster than hate so please spend uh, spend most of your time offline and because when you because when you're offline that is when it gives you the the required it helps you develop the required skills uh, to make good content online uh, so uh, be offline as much as you can and when you're online please don't forget to subscribe to our channel <laughs> uh, and follow me on instagram uh, that is that is my id and if you have any questions please drop me a message on instagram or drop me a mail it's the same id the urban fight at their gmail account on on that note thank you so much i hand it over to you sushanka and thank you to the entire i say uh, lanka and chennai team for giving me this opportunity uh, if you have any thank questions you very much. thank you very much dasken uh, thank you so much for that wonderful uh, engaging presentation Amazing. and i really agree with the fact which you mentioned at the end which is about being offline that helps in your creativity as well right that's where you connect with people that's where human connection happens correct and that makes a huge impact on your content creation so uh, there is a question from the audience uh, tasken so which which advice would you give uh, to keep up with the hype or to be unconventional uh, okay so so yeah topic. trending topic yeah and, uh, trending topic was as unconventional unconventional topic. so frankly the question is not uh, whether to keep up all right so let's do this uh, there are two kinds of videos that you can make on youtube number one is uh, evergreen videos and number two is trending videos trending videos are obviously what's on trend what is currently happening it's corona uh, is happening the pandemic is happening uh, if placement season is happening what what the, those kind of videos evergreen videos are video so those kind of videos will do like a movie is leaked or a music video is leaked uh, giving a review instantly or uh, or, or uh, doing a dance cover immediately that's a trending trending video evergreen videos are videos that will that you will watch like for example how to tie a tie you will watch the video your sons and daughters will watch the video their your grandchildren will also watch that video so that's an evergreen video so evergreen video even though they start slow they pick up and they're like the long term the long term investments i'm editing a stock market video so i can only think in terms of long term investments so um uh, think of them as so those are the evergreen videos so i would say that if you are a creator and have to choose between and if you're pressurized to pick a like for example everybody is making that tiktok versus uh, uh, youtube uh, videos and if you feel the pressure that i should also make it even though i have nothing substantial to make please please don't do it it's a waste of your time it's a waste of your audience's time and by see for a very long time uh, while we're trying to figure out who we are on the urban fight we created videos for others uh, because running was in trend we made a video for the running youtube channel uh, because um, Uh, for for a running club uh, 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 then for something else but uh, uh, we made a video for 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 something else uh, but at that because of this because i was in the pressure to create what's in trend uh, i did not learn uh, i did not grow in that process because i did not discover who i am so i would say that if it's an unconventional topic that you really feel about that you think that you'll add value number one and number two that will make you learn something pick that when compared to like a trending thing that's because to be pretty honest i'm pretty i don't know how sri lanka's trending page is but india's trending page is pretty shitty uh, just um, you don't want to watch like uh, you don't want to make a video about uh, nus nuske hair fall ke like that crap which basically how to stop hair fall that's a kind of crappy videos that get trending on uh, on the platform so you should make it's about you don't get into a competition it's not a competition uh just create videos that you feel true to yourself that you think will add value otherwise don't and yeah, thank you tasket so uh, this is a question asked by so many people how to select a niche okay how to select a niche all right shashanka i think i i uh, I, i pretty much covered this uh, in the ppt as well so uh how to select a niche so we, when we started on youtube right we did not know what is it that we we started as a health and fitness channel because uh, when i was software developer uh, i had a pretty bad uh, lifestyle 
uh, I used to uh, sit in front of the PC for a very long time, skip meals. Uh, so I really actively decided to take care of my health. And uh, one day in the gym, uh, uh, I I, noticed, I realized that pe- that the girls in the gym used to come and ask me how to work out instead of uh, instead of asking the trainer. So I that I remember that moment when I decided th- that my YouTube channel is going to be about fitness. But I didn't want to give out random information of the net. I didn't want to be like a keyboard commando. So I, uh, I to add credibility, I became a A certified fitness trainer. I attended fitness classes by physiotherapists and doctors. Uh, I served as a high intensity interval trainer for four months, and it was a it was a health and fitness channel for some time. Until then, we realized, you know what? Let's play to our strengths. I have eight years of corporate experience. My husband has twelve years of corporate experience. So let's not. Why not make videos about topics? that we know already which is how to prepare for interviews which is how to uh, uh, how to appear in the in the group discussion now how to take care of your personal finances how to buy a house before turning 25 so i would say that in the beginning don't be too uh, don't be too hung up on finding a niche uh, just make a video on the topic that you think you can add value if you are like okay you know what my english is nice or this particular book that i've read is nice i can give a nice review of it make a video don't care i mean nobody cares because in this whole, the best part is because you don't have an audience, it gives you the ability to experiment with it. Like one in one video, maybe you'll be exaggerating too much. In another video, maybe you'll be like too uh, like mellow down. And until after like 10, 50 videos, you'll figure out what is your style. And until then, you'll also figure out, you know what, this is what my audience is loving. This is what I like to do. So in that moment, take take calls in the moment. What is your strength? And then make videos on that. So if you want... So if you want, you can also check out the strengths and weaknesses video on my channel. <laughs> and the one there. Uh, yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, uh, there is a video called "How I How I Got One Lakh Subscribers on YouTube" on my channel, The Urban Fight. Check it out because that gives you a uh, that will give you a whole overview of what goes behind the scenes uh, in, in you know picking up a, a topic and then figuring out how to reach out to your audience and things like that. All right, Taskin, thank you so much uh, for that wonderful presentation. And uh, I really believe it was a much benefit to the audience. And, and uh, it's an important factor that you mentioned about getting work experience, yeah. getting into a certain discipline and all of that, which is important, Absolutely. which is essential, I would say. So Taskin, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for accepting the invitation. It was a great pleasure having you with us. The pleasure was and, all. Uh, let me say, uh, let me wish uh, that your channel grows from strength to strength Thank and you would be able to touch uh, many millions in the years to come. So Thank did you, you so like, much. So, did you like me enough to open your mobile phone and subscribe to my channel, Shishanga? Definitely, will do. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And I will tell you that Sri Lanka is an amazing place. Uh, we visited it way back in 2013. And as a part of Toastmasters, we were invited to uh, give a session and we absolutely loved uh, uh, Sri Lanka. We know, we know that autos are called tuk-tuks. So me and my husband, uh, Sugand, uh, sort of, we, we traveled there for the first time and sort of fell in love with Sri Lanka. So it would, I think that, that's the reason why I said yes to this talk is because Sri Lanka will always uh, hold a very important place in my heart. So thank you so much. You guys are lovely and uh, have a really great uh, conference. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you uh, soon here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Take care. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye. So we say goodbye to Tuskin, Fatima Basha. Uh, talked about five steps of video creation with a wonderful presentation. I reckon that was quite engaging as well. I hope all of you would have enjoyed and gained knowledge with that presentation. So now we have, we are about to talk about how to benefit from your passion in YouTubing. So the next two speakers are Bianca Gan. She is a travel and lifestyle vlogger on YouTube. And Ekta Chaudhary, a researcher and an entrepreneur from India, specialized in the field of ecology. After finishing her PhD from IIS in Bangalore, Ekta decided to make a career in digital media and edutainment through her own venture, Garden Up, logical extension to a very successful YouTube channel. So her content caters to young urban audiences, helping them find greenery, sustainability, and balance in their lives. So that's her contribution to a silent yet powerful green revolution which is needed by 
the current world. And we hope that your concept is popularized in a great magnitude and that you help the people in the years to come. So we say hello to Bianca again and Ekta Chaudhry. Hi, Bianca. Hi, uh, Ekta. Great to have you both at UConn 2.0. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. And thanks very much for joining at uh, UConn 2.0 and sharing your knowledge, which will be of much benefit to our audience. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. So let's begin with the conversation. Uh, how did you create this passion to get on YouTube? Let me ask uh, Ekta first, and then we'll move on to Bianca. Okay. Sorry, the light. You want me to repeat the question? No, it's okay. I understood. Yes. So um, I started this channel just out of boredom. And when I was finishing my PhD, so in research, there are lots of phases, the stages of it. You have to collect data, you have to analyze that data, you have to publish it. And uh, trust me when I tell you that when you have to analyze that data and you have to publish it, it's extremely boring. And it's like a typical desk job. So I was back from Mudumalai Tiger Reserve, which is in Southern India. And I had finished my field work and I had to sit and analyze data. And I was very, very bored. And I started with just a couple of plants that I had actually stolen from my campus. Uh, IASC has a beautiful campus and there are lots of plants and I used to steal these cuttings and grow them in water. And then slowly from one plant, it went to like 20, 30 and 50 plants in my tiny hostel room. So when I had all these plants around me, I of course faced a lot of issues. And I'm, uh, yes, I was about to ask Bianca that muting might help. So um, yes, when I was ha I had so many plants in my hostel room, I of course had a lot of issues with them and they were insects and I couldn't figure out what was going wrong with them and I went online. What I realized when I went online was that gardening is something that people address like it's a science protocol, like how to do this, do that, do that. But nobody talked about the why of it. And I never realized that gardening is my passion in any way because I already always had plants around me. It's not like, you know, I had this moment when I realized, oh, you know, I love gardening. It was never, it was always like a part of my bringing up. I was always having a lot of plants, but garden up actually came into existence because I realized I had something to offer, which was not already there in the digital space. So that's how it started. Uh, I think you're mute, on mute, Shashank. Yeah. I'm sorry. So Bianca, how did you take your passion to YouTube? I actually started just like Ekta. I was also bored. And I actually started when I was really young. I started when I was around 15 years old. And back then, YouTube really wasn't that big of a thing. And it wasn't really that normal back then. So... I kind of kept it a secret from people and just did it because I enjoyed making videos and enjoyed, um, it was my passion talking about like travel, fashion and lifestyle. So that's basically how I started. And like throughout the years, I just realized that um, I shouldn't care about what other people think, even if it's not such a normal thing to do. But now that it's more normalized, I'm a lot more confident with it and I'm a lot more um, I'm encouraging like a lot more people to get into it if it's their passion and if it's their interests. And yeah, that's just basically how I started. Oh, uh, you're on mute. Yes. So you can hear you can hear me, right? Yes. Awesome. So how do you understand your audience? It is quite vital when, when it comes to content creation. How do you understand your audience? So I think when you start out, you just start out with whatever you think you want to offer on that channel. And then you kind of connect with people who are very similar to you. And that's all. so it's like a circular thing. Uh, you identify your audience by first you create content and then the audience that actually connects with your 
content connects and then you and then you try and figure out what all they need and then you start making that content but that first stage when you start out it totally depends on what you want to offer because you don't have an audience at that point and you don't know what they would want but once you start making that content you of course understand that audience for example for me my demographic sort of reflect on the kind of audience i have these are urban people 20 between 20 years to 35 40 years these are people uh, you know gardening is something that uh, i'm pretty sure across various countries of in uh, of the the indian subcontinent gardening was something that 60 year plus people were doing on their terrace or in their big garden but very few people of our age would do, like having plants in their small house because for us the constraints are very different we don't have a luxury of a terrace we don't have a big garden i say in mumbai the real estate is so expensive i can't even afford a terrace so uh, our problems are different so i sort of connected with people of my age who had similar issues like i had like i have only a window let's say or a balcony to grow plants so i can't grow guava tree or i can't grow pomegranate so then i try and cater that audience with the kind of content i feel will work for them but when you move with demographics and you go towards let's like 60 plus there this content will not do they will be looking at you know how do you grow pomegranate or how do you do a graft uh, so i think this is it's sort of interconnected you first come up with whatever you want to say and then you figure out that you know this is your audience and what are the other things they might be needing to start gardening or whatever genre you are addressing same question to you uh, bianca how do you understand your audience um so something that i made sure to apply to my life and apply to whenever i create content and whenever i make videos is to make videos that i'm genuinely interested in and genuinely passionate about and i won't just make videos that get a lot of views just because they get a lot of views and that's something that i'm not interested in so i think it's for me the way that i connect to my audience is i just try my best to be as authentic and as genuine as i can so what you see on camera is what you get in person and i don't try to like um take my interest if it's not something that i'm interested in so whenever i make a video i always ask myself is this something that i would sit through and spend time watching and spend time um listening to and if it's a yes then um i create that content but if it's a no then i don't force myself to be fake about it even if it's something that gets a lot of views or something that a lot of people watch so yeah i feel like um it's really important to be genuine and un- authentic when it comes to your passion and your interests because um people can see it through the camera they can see if you're being fake or if you're actually genuine and you actually care about the things that you talk about so yeah so uh this question is to uh ekta how do you keep up with the competition this is a question from the audience so i honestly in space of youtube or digital content i don't see there is competition i mean competition when i say i mean there's nothing as competition really uh everybody has something different to offer in a different way see the thing is when you make a video it's not about just the content it's about your personality it's about the language you choose it's about the aesthetics you choose and what what all you're offering uh there it's like a big network of sensory uh you know the receptors that people are receiving your content look at various others in various kind of indicators when you look at instagram for example it's a very two dimensional visual uh, whatever you say like audience is just looking at your pictures but when you put out videos there's so much more to it it's about your voice it's about so many things so i competition in real terms would exist only when somebody else can be exactly your copy and offer the entire same thing so for example as an audience me myself i might be watching you know person a for home decor because i really like her taste but i might be watching person b as well because i really like her personality so i in real terms i don't think there is competition per se as long as you have real content to offer as long as you're adding value to anyone's life i think they will come back and 
watch whatever you have to offer. Thank you, Ekla. So, uh, Bianca, I think you sh you could answer this question. Now, there are plenty of people watching this uh, Yukon 2.0, and they now they, they have ideas in their heads. Ideas are easy; execution is hard. Since you started when you were 15, you said, "What are the challenges when you just started?" It's just a matter of starting, isn't it? Yes. What are the challenges okay. you went through? Um, so the challenges that I went through, as I said earlier, um, YouTube wasn't really that normalized. And whenever I would try to film videos or whenever I would try to um, vlog in public, like I would get a lot of stares from people and a lot of laughs from people because it wasn't such a normal thing compared to now. And I think the challenge for me was it kind of made me insecure and it kind of made me want to keep it a secret instead and just let whoever finds it find my videos. But um, throughout the years, I just brushed that off and decided to just go for it because I don't want to be, I don't want to grow up and look back at my past and regret not starting when I could have. So I'm really happy that I was able to just dive head first, even if it was scary. And I think that's something that I encourage to people who want to start YouTube or people who want to make videos is to just do it and to just go for it. I know it's going to be scary at first, but eventually through time, you're just going to grow um, grow into it and just get used to it and used to the process. And once you start receiving feedback from people and um, once you see that your content is really getting out there and that you're growing not only numerically, but growing as a person and adding value and adding um, insights to your life and to both you to both your life and to your audience's life. I think it's what really motivates you to just keep going and to keep pushing and creating content. All right, awesome. Uh, so Ekta, this is a question to you from the audience. So you're a researcher as well. So how do you balance, how do you manage your YouTube career and your profession? So I am a researcher by training, but currently I am not pursuing research per se. I uh, am working on a book for sure, but uh, I am not really like researching. Uh, I finished my PhD in 2019, which is last year I defended. So uh, my active research participation ended with that, I guess. I might go back to it, but for now, Garden Up is something that I eat, live and breathe <laughs> and everything around Garden Up. Yeah, we would like to, uh hear about your book as well. Let, let's move into that uh, after the question to Bianca. Bianca, so you're a travel and lifestyle vlogger. Uh, we would like to know, are there any unforgettable experiences that you can share with us when uh, trying to create your content? Um, I guess, the most unforgettable experiences in regards to content. By the way, it's a question from the audience. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for asking the question. But I think one of the most unforgettable moments when it comes to creating content is when I create travel content. And it's just really nice to be able to look back at the memories you made and to just have that copy of that moment in time that happened because you're never gonna be able to get to relive that exact same moment. So being able to look back on it and have those memories is just something that I think is really valuable and something that you can hold on to forever, even if you've already experienced it. So yeah, those are the most memorable videos that I make. All right, so talking about uh, YouTube, people are more interested in getting into uh, traditional media as well but they don't think of the opportunity they have on social media. That's quite huge. And uh, unfortunately, some people don't see. What are your views on this? Let's uh, ask this question first from Hector, and then we move on. I would like, to, like you to repeat it again, actually. So what I'm saying is, uh, there is a huge demand from people mm -hmm. to get into traditional media, maybe mm -hmm. electronic media, TV, radio, or so on and so forth. But they don't see the opportunity that they have on social media. Mm -hmm. The opportunity is huge. They've not realized. Mm 
So what are your views? How can people change their mindset and get onto social media and create that value? So you mean as creators or as audience? As creators. Okay. So see, when you create the very two different kind of platforms, social media uh, as a creator is is an opportunity for you to come out and showcase whatever you might have to offer for people, for community, for the world. When you talk about the typical media, it's more like press, which is a source of information. And that is delivered by journalists. So I feel these are two very different kind of uh, platforms. Although the term media sort of is confusing, but social media is more like an opportunity for any regular person to come out and show and uh, create content, whatever they would like to create content about. But as for the question that uh, there might be so many more people who would want to create something on social media, but have been hesitant about it. So, and if they feel intimidated uh, with it and they feel that probably they can't figure out how to go about it and does it really hold a real value? So for them, I would like to say that, see, it's always a trial and error. You have to try it out. Nothing can be promised. Uh, we do see these YouTubers, you know, who, who are in whatever the millionaire list and then they're also very small YouTubers. So when you start out, I would say that don't start out with that incentive of that you want to be this huge YouTuber. Start out with an incentive of, you know, what you want to offer or what you want to do out of it. There could be a range of things that you could be wanting to do. You could want to teach people with whatever you have, whatever abilities you have. You might want to build a portfolio for yourself that can help you to loop into something else that you would want to build for your career. So I would say is that first try and identify what, why do you want to use whatever social media platform, be it Instagram, be it YouTube, be it Facebook. And once you've figured that out, then figure out how do you want to sustain it? Because, you know, putting out those 10 pictures initially is very easy, but to do that for years and to make it financially sustainable and to make it pleasing for the audience is definitely work. And it needs some kind of devotion and it's need some kind of um, effort. And, you know, every day you have to wake up and think, what do you want to do? So uh, for people who are in that phase deciding that would they want to do this or not, I would say, sure, try it out. There's nothing bad. Uh, and there's no harm in trying out, but do a little planning as well around it. All right. So the next question, uh, I'll direct this question to both of you. How do you interact with your fan base? Uh, Bianca? Um, the way that I like to interact with my fan base is I like to respond to as much comments as I can and as much as much messages that I get on Instagram. And I feel like it's all about being consistent and all about making time for the people who make time for you. So you wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for the people supporting me. So if they give time to me and enough time to me to support me, then I think that it's just fair and it's just right for me to give enough time to them and to just show them how much I appreciate them and show them how much I value them and how much I'm thankful for their support and for their love because without them, I wouldn't be where I am. So yeah, I think that it's really important to um, interact with your audience and be able to just reciprocate the same amount of love that they give back to you. So yeah. Same question to you, Ekta. Uh, what can you add? I completely agree with Bianca. I try and use as, as many platforms I can, uh, DMs, comments, but it definitely gets difficult uh, to respond to each and every comment. Uh, I also feel that it's a big database uh, for creators, for content creators, whatever they say to you, uh, that can help you to construct um, what you want to deliver further, for example, in space of gardening, there are so many questions that I continuously keep getting or the problems that people are facing. And that helps me to decide what more content I want to do and also in what style I want to deliver uh, or I should deliver so that my audience, it helps my audience. So I feel that this constant connection with your audience, uh, I don't really like to use the word followers, uh, but this audience, uh, with this audience, it's really important to have that kind of connection. Uh, and that could be in many ways. 
Yeah, uh, actually, and Bianca, we are running out of time. We are just about uh, just under 10 minutes left. So I just want to direct these two questions together. One is, how do you increase your views for a video? And uh, what are the software that you use to edit your videos? Questions from the audience. Quick answers. Uh, from Ekta, you can start. Uh, see, if your content is good and if people find it interesting, it will increase the views. There is no shortcut to it. Uh, there is no defined rule for it. You have to understand what people like, what is different that you can offer. It could be about packaging. It could be about the content. Uh, it could be about, I mean, so many things, but you have to figure out what is something new that you can offer. And it's all about just that one video that goes viral. And if it does, then it'll get your audience. It'll people will start watching your other videos which never got views. And what are the software you use to edit your videos? Uh, so I started with Windows Movie Maker, I think when I started about two, two and a half years back. Then I went to iMovies, then I went to Final Cut Pro. I might go to Adobe Premiere now, but actually the key is not what software you use. It depends on the resources you have. Uh, it's more about what you offer to the people. I keep repeating this, but this it's actually all about what you offer to the people. You're spot on. Uh, Bianca? Um, so for me, I think that the way you can increase your views is, as Ekta said earlier, it's all about trial and error. Sometimes other videos are going to get less views than others, and sometimes you're going to get a viral video, but the rest of your videos aren't going to get as much views or attention. And I think one of the most helpful ways on how you can attract attention to people clicking your video is having a nice thumbnail and having a caption or a title that's catchy and clickable because I feel like thumbnails are the first thing that people see when they scroll on YouTube. So you have to make sure that it blends in with your brand and it blends in with your characteristics and your what you have to offer. So yeah, at the same time, you, you want to make it attractive, but you don't want to... Uh, um, make it fake or make it over exaggerated. So I think you just have to find your balance and find what works with you and then just um, work around that. And yeah, the, the video editor that I use was I used to use Windows Movie Maker to <laughs> like like that. And then I went to iMovie too. And then currently I'm using Final Cut Pro. I think throughout time, you just kind of figure out how to work around it. And then you just want to start um, developing and um, going into the more complicated stuff. So I think it's really important to just work with what you have. You don't need to buy expensive softwares right away or buy expensive equipment. Just learn to utilize and work with what you have. And yeah, I think that's the most important thing because like a lot of people think that at the start, you need to have this software, you have to have this expensive camera, all of this lighting, but it's all about just utilizing what you have and working with what you have. So. All right, final question to you both. Uh, what is the message that you'll have to share to the beginners on YouTube? I would say just try it out. <laughs> try it out, it might just click. And if you enjoy it, then you will improve on whatever you're making content about. And just, there's no harm, just pick a phone and shoot a video you would want to. Uh, the, whatever the frills that are required to edit it and you know make your content good and attractive will come along. But the first thing is that you have to break that inertia and you have to shoot a video. And these days, the phones are fantastic. You don't need any kind of other tool. Bianca? Um, for me, I guess my biggest piece of advice is to just go for it and to just break, your, break yourself out of your shell. And if you're not going to do it, you never will. So might as well just start now. And always remember your intentions for starting a YouTube channel and always just stay grounded no matter how far 
you go or no matter how many followers you get, I feel like it's really important to just remember where you started and always be grounded to that. All right, uh, thank you very much, Ekta, Chaudhry, and Priyanka again for joining in UCOM 2.0 and sharing your knowledge and wisdom on YouTube. I hope that the audience could have benefited from what you have mentioned. So we wish that your YouTube channels grow from strength to strength and may them impact multitudes of people in the future. So thank you very much, Ekta. Thank you very much, Bianca, for joining us. It was a great pleasure having you with us. Uh, we thank hope you so you. much for having us. We hope to see you in Sri Lanka. So we would love to. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> <We're there. laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Take awesome. care. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure. Thank you too. You. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, with that, we wrap up the opening session where we talked about the beginning of uh, YouTube or how uh, YouTube can be used as a beginner. So, UCON 2.0 is a virtual international conference on YouTube and content creation put together by ISEC in University of Sri Jawadanpura in collaboration with ISEC in Chennai. So before we wrap up, we just want to remind you that all your unanswered questions would be answered in the sessions that are yet to come. So we'd like to remind the partners, without partners, this would not have been a success. Educo Pathway, Pearl of Ocean Front, Shop Here, Ozone Desk, and Cloud Accounting. So thank you very much to all the partners for making this a reality and letting us come online and share this knowledge, even with the speakers to a wonderful audience like you. So the next session is on the legal aspect of YouTube and building a business around YouTube. So the session will start at 4 p.m. and run until 6 p.m. The speakers will be Mr. Janet Rodrigo, the general manager of Idea Health, Mr. Richard Jain and Mr. Mandeep Gill, co-founders of Labor Law Advisor. We also want to remind you of uh, Nakshat for Wedding, another partner joined to make Yukon 2.0 a success. So before we wrap up, I just want to mention you a name of a book. It's called New Power, where it elaborates on the power of social media and how you could create value to your audience and move on. So let's wrap up the opening session of Yukon 2.0. It was wonderful having all of you with us. We, we say thank you very much to all the speakers. Pratima Adhikari, Tuskin, Fatima Basha, Bian Bianca Gen, and Etta Chaudhry. Thank you very much to all of you and thanks ISEC in University of Sri Jawadanpura and ISEC in Chennai. Thank you very much. And a little message before we leave, empower with the new power and create value. Stay safe, take care, wish you success. Thank you very much. Are you planning to study abroad but not sure what to do and where to go? Our qualified counsellors at Educo Pathways will help you select the right programme in the right country. We have partnered with world-class universities in Australia, Malaysia, Canada, Ireland, United Kingdom, USA, New Zealand and Netherlands. We will also advise you with all the necessary documents you need and help you with your visa application. Remember, all our services are free of charge. Call us now to book an appointment on 0772 711 711.